Hey guys, it's Scott, the Digital Marketing MBA from Channel Zero Marketing. And I'm done. I'm done with the rap challenge. I know you guys are going to be excited to uh, learn about this and, and see what happened, exactly how it went down. Um, but I don't want to get it twisted. So this isn't so much about the music, right? So the backstory starts like this. I was going through YouTube hip hop music videos and I actually came across a video where the people, it was a really decent song, um, great production on the song and the video. The guys were dressed to the hilt. They had weapons, they had drugs, they had very nice clothes. They had a convertible Ferrari. Um, they had on a uh, bulletproof vest, which aren't cheap. Um, and it was just, it was just top of the line. And the video was out for like seven months, eight months at the time that I saw it, like January of this year. And it had like 300 views. Um, and I just couldn't believe, I guess I can believe, but I was just really frustrated that these guys, let's say they rented, uh, the stuff or they borrowed the stuff. What was clear was within their circle of influence, they had the resources. Uh, to put together a high production video, a good look, um, high production song, but they couldn't get eyeballs on it. They couldn't even get 300 or 400 views on it. And I just, I thought that was a crime and it was upsetting to me. So I went to my Instagram and I asked all of you guys, I asked the hip hop fans there, what are the reasons why you think that songs from 2018, 2019 that you've posted, it doesn't matter where, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, um, are still sitting below a thousand spins, are still sitting below a thousand streams. And here's some of the responses that I got. The most common answers, I, I lumped them all together into, uh, number one, lack of promotion know-how. They didn't know how to promote it. I, I get that. I understand at least you own it you don't know anything about promoting or marketing or exposure branding lack of promotion dollars i i want to challenge you on that these guys clearly had the promotion dollars and and i think if any of us looked at our bank accounts especially if you're in the u.s and i don't care if you're struggling where there's a will there's a way baby and i, I can get into that more later um lack of promotion they said we just didn't do any so they really know how but they just didn't do it which i appreciate the honesty and owning it lack of quality and i don't really know if i agree with that um that that was a high quality video and it didn't have any views so i i can't use that excuse i can't accept that excuse uh it needs more time to be discovered um, and then everybody keeps going to that uh, Lizzo story about she gets discovered two years later. We'll get into that in a bit as well. And I'm an artist. I don't care about the numbers. And I'm going to call bullcrap on that. Um, you know, that's I hear the same thing from broke people who don't know how to make money. That uh, money just makes people a-holes and money doesn't buy happiness and all that it's usually the broke people that are saying that and i am no way greedy or superficial or materialistic um consider myself highly spiritual uh but i'm also happy and and i'm not a dummy and i know that uh, there's scientific proof now that there is kind of this uh, uh threshold of happiness in finances once you break uh, there's a great documentary on it in book but happy on netflix you should check it out so Anyhow, those were the responses that I got. So I kind of wanted to push back and challenge you guys, challenge the people on my Instagram, challenge the people in the hip hop community that I'm working with um, to, to step up their game, right? Because um, I just I just wasn't buying into most of these things other than you own it that I just didn't do any promotion uh, or I don't know how. So I thought maybe I can give you a couple techniques of how, or at least a, a wide picture, and then challenge you to show you that it's easy to be done in this day and age, and you're without excuse. There's no excuse at all to be without a thousand spins on or streams on any um, uh, platform. And so I came up with the rap challenge, and the rap challenge was that I, a marketer, I have no music skills, I can't rap, I can't sing, couldn't carry a tune in a bucket, don't know anything about mixing or mastering, um, I, ghost writing, nothing, video production, nothing at all when it comes to music is me. Um, I am a marketer. So the challenge was 
that I'm going to take $49 because people are saying they don't have the money to do it right. I'm going to take $49 and I'm going to take 14 days max. So I've got a budget of $49, a window of time of, I keep looking at the microphone. Sorry guys. <laughs> like I'm talking to the microphone instead of the computer. Let me get a cup, a sip of coffee here. I got $49 and 14 days to prove to you that I can get a thousand streams or spins that it does nothing to do with quality. It has nothing to do with uh, having big budgets and money. It has nothing to do with the, the high quality production. And there's no reason in this day and age that you should be sitting under a thousand spins at all. So let me show you what I did. And then we're going to come back and talk about the big ideas because I don't want this to be about the music some people keep getting twisted up about that like i didn't make a great song that's not the point we'll come back to the big ideas that i want you to walk away with but let's look at what i did first and i think you're going to be surprised all right so i think you guys are going to be surprised at how i got this accomplished um again coming from a marketing background i got all this done really with reaching out to three different websites was the maximum that that i ended up using i was trying to limit it to as little as possible and the first one i went to was fiverr most of you probably know about fiverr um, but if you don't i'll put a link below the video there'll be a link for fiverr and you should check it out there's a lot of great things you can get done here on fiverr um, what i did was i came out to fiverr and the first thing i needed obviously was a beat and so if you look in the history of my orders, let's get my noggin out of the way here. And we look at my orders right here. I will produce trap hip hop lo-fi beat for you. So I clicked on this order right here from this young man and I placed the order and it cost me $7. And I, he said, what, you know, what kind of beat are you looking for? And I opened my phone to see what the first music I would see in Spotify was. And it was Rich the Kid, and I just responded to him, and I said, I want a Rich the Kid style beat. And so he said, okay, not a problem. I placed the order, and I got it back uh, within a day from him. Then I took that beat, and I found this young man, also on Fiverr, and asked him to write me, um, a hook and a verse and I was able to get that from him for $12 um, so sent the beat got the beat sent the beat over to him a couple days later um, got the track back and he had it all stemmed out for me um, so had a verse had a chorus, had the beat now so we're just a f like four days into this so then I decided I was going to see if I could get uh, I thought I was doing well on a budget. Another verse done by somebody else. So now we have a collaboration. So it's more than just one person. Uh, collabs are important. They're a big piece of, of helping to get exposure and marketing. And people are saying it's hard to find collabs. So I got a second verse done by this guy for $7. Um, so now I'm about six days into this. And I've got the beat done. I got chorus done. Or hook done and I've got two verses from two different artists right I also told the artist the first artist that I wanted him to mention the word gringo which was my nickname just so people would know it was the song that I had put together um, he actually made the whole course about it it's a little bit corny but it just goes to prove that it, that it was my order and, and my song that I did for this challenge then last but not least as far as Fiverr goes I dug through a bunch of these and I found a person who would do mix and master of the song. So I sent him all the stems from the beats, every, the courses, everybody's verses, and had him put them all together uh, in a wave format. And he got that back to me in just a matter of a couple days. Um, I decided there are services on here for designing caps and covers. Um, for uh, Spotify, for YouTube, for anything like that, for uploading album covers, if you will. And I decided I didn't want to spend money on that because I was already at $38. I had spent $38 of my budget um, and I only had $12 left or $11 left. 
And I thought I was going to need that for advertising, right? To run some ads and try to get those thousand streams. So I went over to Canva and designed my own cover for free. I'll put a link below that to Canva. So um, went over there, just threw something together, pulled down some free art from Google, typed in the name of the song. I made up a name for the group. I call it the Fiverr Click. Um, then I added those two guys' names on there as well uploaded it to YouTube and I got to brainstorming about, man, how am I going to take this um, $11 basically and get a thousand streams from it, right? That's the challenge. It's really a marketing challenge. And running an ad is one of the points we're gonna talk about is not marketing, right? So I knew just running an ad with $11 would get me a thousand people exposed to a thousand people, but a thousand people w wouldn't click on those links. It wouldn't go listen to that so I knew I had to wrap it up inside of a story so the song had to be basically hidden in a story if I was going to get that kind of traction and I had several ideas of how I was going to do that um, and really dramatic stuff um, and, and I can go through those later with you guys but telling a story or telling your story or wrapping it up inside a story we'll get into that at the end of the video is really really important but what I ended up doing was I went over to reddit so what I did before I spent any of the budget I decided to wrap this up in a story about marketing and what I did up to this point and and the same thing we're talking about right now and put it on reddit because I knew by going to reddit I use that as a source of traffic all the time that I could probably get my thousand listens to by wrapping it up in a story and put it on Reddit. Now I had some other great ideas to wrap it up in a story on Facebook and run an ad, but I decided to try this first because it was free and I didn't have to spend any money. And so I did that, I created this post, I put a link to the song right here and you can see I got 298 upvotes, 79 comments, and here's the kicker. I've got the link posted inside of that Reddit post, right? unlisted on YouTube. No one can access it other than that link from Reddit. I'm going to put the link below this video so you can go listen to it um, because I know you're curious about what the song turned out like, but check this out. 1,978 views um, just from Reddit traffic because I wrapped it up in a story. Now you can see not a high quality song. It was split half and half, but listen to the link below but let's before you do that let's get into the real meat of what the lessons are here all right so what's the big ideas behind this because i got a lot of confusion even in the reddit comments uh over what was trying to be accomplished and what it was what it was telling us or what it was signifying so these are the big ideas i wanted to get across that i wanted hopefully that you guys find helpful with it it changes maybe the way you think or approach kind of what you're doing first of all First of all, there's no real reason to be below 1,000 streams or views in this day and age. There's no reason for it. And why do you need it? Why does it matter? Because number one, it's social proof. We all know that we go scrolling through uh, YouTube and Spotify, and I'm rolling through YouTube videos, and I see videos that have been up for three months, six months, one year, and they've got 79 views or 300 views, and I don't stop. Because if they've been there a year and they've got 79 views, it's probably not any good. And, and time is important to me, right? So it's just, a, it's a subconscious thing that we do. We do judge books by their cover. So having above a thousand or 10,000 or a hundred thousand is social proof. You got to have some of that social proof. Um, the second thing is, it, it, that ties into that is the FOMO, the fear of missing out. A lot of us like to be the guy that or the gal that's hip to what is happening in the music that we turn our friends on to new music and new artists, right? We don't like to scroll by something and then see that somebody's got 300,000 views or 3 million views and we ain't hip to it. Um, no, no, no. I got to stop and listen to this. Who's this guy? How's he got 3 million views? How am I not hip to this? And then if I like it, then of course, right away, I'm, I'm sending over to all my friends. Hey, check this guy out. I've been bumping him a while right so we don't want to be the last ones to find out so there's reasons to have those numbers another reason is no manager no label wants to touch you if you ain't put in no groundwork this you got to think of yourself like a business you're a brand and a business and this and and yeah 
you if you want managers and labels and people to take you serious you've got to put in the groundwork the legwork and and get some sweat equity into it what they do is they come along and they find somebody that's making a little bit of buzz a little bit of money that can fill out a small club that can get you know 100,000 streams a million streams and they say okay this guy's got a small little fire going we've got the money and the connections and the ability and the experience to throw gasoline on it it's just like venture capitalists with startup businesses it, you know you develop this app or you develop this idea and you got to get it going you got to get people on board and you got to show that it works and you got to show there's an interest in it and then when people see that it's starting to get a little bit of traction they're willing to invest some money into it you can't just write some great idea yeah, it happens one in a million so does it with music artists but you can't just write a great idea down on a napkin and people are going to invest a hundred million dollars in it um, nor can you just post up one song and say oh that's so hot and so much fire that somebody's just going to scoop me up doesn't happen like that so you've got to get something built up and going and then people will have more interest in collabing with you and investing money in you uh, and signing you but you've got to get some of this work done man you can't be floating around it at a hundred views and 79 views and 300 views come on get it up a little bit and I ain't saying a thousand is going to make a big difference but I'm trying to get you to understand how easy it is to get to a thousand and there's no reason you should be sitting below it right I'm not saying a thousand is going to open the door don't don't get it twisted um, the, another thing I want you to consider in looking at this man I did this for $38 $38 and some creativity um, where's your money going are you like the guy i talked about in the beginning of the video that you're spending it all on audio production and beats and beat leases and you had to get a beat from so and so so you spent 300 bucks or a grand on it and you got to record in this this certain studio and then you pay this this person to make this video and you got all this money tied up in clothes and front and and then the stupid stuff too man bottle service trips to vegas um you know golly strip clubs weed all the stuff you can change you guys are posting on your internet and your instagram fronting why aren't you investing that in marketing and, and branding and storytelling and some other things when why why are you uh, eating out or partying or dating or anything else when you got a video that's got 70 views on it i just i don't get it you ain't serious about the music industry and, and i'd rather just talk you out of it man get out of it it's too crowded leave create space for some people who really want this thing man so, and final thought on this is running ads isn't marketing right it's a part of marketing it's advertising it's just a small part of marketing though i'm going to challenge you guys to wrap all this up in a story what's your story um, what makes you unique and we can we can look at a lot of different ways of doing this and some of you may think what I did was kind of unethical but you know I've, I'm talking with an artist right now I'm working with who who was adopted and I'm trying to convince him that that should be part of his story he should do music about it um, people he, he's going to get his thousand true fans by other people who've been in the foster care system and been adopted they're going to identify with him um, logic talked about mental health issues and depression and, and his pills and all that and he had this whole crowd that identified it with him before he ever got on you can watch videos of him selling out these small clubs and the people in the front row you know crying and acting like he's the Beatles um, they were so connected with him if you go watch Dax what he's doing right now he's so connected with his people it's it's unbelievable he's got some really diehard fans uh, there's a ton of ways to do this um, you know uh, and we could go through all the people who've connected with their audience in a million different ways but wrap it up in a story get creative so you know there's reasons why Nipsey sells a mixtape for a hundred dollars was it because he thought it was worth a hundred dollars or uh, he, no one deserved to pay you know get it for twenty dollars it, it was a marketing thing it was a creative strategy the guy was brilliant when it came to stuff like that there's a reason why Wu-Tang sells one album they record this album and only sell one copy of it right um, they only made one copy available it's a marketing gimmick it keeps them fresh it keeps them in the news there's a reason that dance challenges um, help people go viral and so you try to create a dance challenge to go along with your song uh, there's a reason 50 cent says he'll retire if Kanye outsells him um, there's there's reasons why Jay-Z goes and gives away a million copies of his album to people who bought the Galaxy uh, I don't remember which one it was 
uh, but one of those Galaxy phones three days before anyone else. It's part of a marketing story. Um, there's a reason Beyonce drop Jay Z and Beyonce can sell albums. All these people can sell albums, right? So why do you go and drop an album full of videos without telling anybody in the middle of the night? Because that's a story. Now, other than she's just releasing a new album, now, oh my gosh, she did no promotion. She dropped it in the middle of the night. There's a video for every song. No one saw this coming. It was a big secret. Now all the world and the press are talking about it more than they would have. She would have sold without it, but more than they would have. It's wrapped up in another story. There's a reason why Khaled proposes to Nicki Minaj, uh, right? There's a reason why he makes his son the executive producer. Do you think his son really is the executive producer? Uh, it It's stories. It gets people talking more than just about the music. Why did the uh, uh, the weekend go and, and delete every photo on his Instagram before dropping his his new album? Everybody's what happened? Where'd he go? You know, why is all the pictures gone? Is he okay? And then he starts dripping them back in with the album release, right? There's a million different ways to do this, but marketing takes some creativity, takes some branding, takes some storytelling. So that all being said, for those of you who are like, man, I need some help with this stuff. I am working on some courses right now uh, on Reddit. That's going to be huge because I've driven tons of traffic with Reddit and I love that community. There's so much you can do there, but you've got to know how to navigate it or you're going to get burnt. And I'm working on another uh, pr a course for the marketing big box as well. That's going to include storytelling and branding so that you can help discover what your voice is, what your story is, who your target audience is. And the more you can niche that down, the quicker you're going to get to your thousand true fans and start to find success. I hope you guys had fun with this. I hope I challenged you and I didn't offend you. Go listen to the song. Um, let me know some feedback on it. Let me know what you thought about this whole challenge. Um, and, and what you think about these big ideas, if you will. Again, I hope it's a blessing. Have a great one, guys.